Now let's look at the next part of the gastrointestinal tract, and that is the small intestine. <coughs> You know from your lectures that the three parts of the small intestine are the duodenum, the jejunum, and the ileum. And as we'll see, the uh, structure of the small intestine is largely similar between these three with really just uh, minor differences. However, uh, for each part there are one or two diagnostic features that enables you to distinguish it uh, from its fellows. To begin with, let's just take a quick uh, diagrammatic overview of the general structure of the uh, small intestine. And the key feature which I want to emphasize here is that throughout the small intestine, but particularly in the jejunum and the ileum, the mucosal surface uh, has a series of folds that project outward into the lumen like shelves, uh, semi-spiral uh, shelves, and these are called the plicae circulares, or valves of Kirchhoff. And I've shown a schematic diagram of one here. In a sense, they structurally resemble the rugae of the stomach in that the core of a valve of Kirchhoff is made up of submucosal connective tissue and the muscularis mucosa extends up into and all the way through the um, valve of Kirchhoff or plica circularis. The epithelium lines the surface of the plica circularis, but in the small intestine the epithelium itself, uh, the mucosa itself, is thrown into a series of folds, which I have illustrated here as being finger-like projections extending out from the plica circularis. But in actuality these are uh, not always finger-shaped, they can be considerably more complex shaped and shaped more like leaves or branched structures. And these are called villi. On the right hand side here is a schematic diagram of a cross section of a villus. I haven't illustrated the actual epithelial cells which throughout the small intestine are um, tall columnar cells called enterocytes interspersed with a second population of mucus secreting cells called goblet cells. Beneath that epithelium and its uh, basement membrane, the mucosa, is a core in the villus of lamina propria. And uh, this core is very important and has some important uh, characteristics. In the core of each villus are found uh, small arterioles or venules or indeed the capillary beds derived from arterioles and uh, venules. And these blood vessels are responsible for picking up the absorbed material from the small intestine. They're not always very visible because there are a huge number of cells derived from the immune system which are present in the lamina propria of the villi. And these represent cells which are migrating to and from the epithelial surface, which are in essence sampling the antigenic environment in the lumen or exterior. There's also in the core of each villus a single blind-ended lymphatic vessel called a lacteal, which I've illustrated here in green. Because we absorb triglycerides and fats and so on from the small intestine, it's important that these absorbed materials are not carried in the blood, because making the blood too fatty would obviously not be particularly advantageous. So fats and triglycerides and so on, absorbed in the small intestine, are transported in the lymphatic system, and these fats and triglycerides are picked up by this blind ended lacteal capillary and are carried off through uh, via the cisterna chylae through the rest of the lymphatic system. Elsewhere in the small intestine there's a muscularis mucosa just as we would have seen anywhere else. There's a submucosa which contains the large blood vessels and nerves that serve the area and a muscularis externa or muscularis propria which is always composed of an inner circular and an outer longitudinal layer. Much of the small intestine is peritonealized and so has a serosa on the external surface, but there are parts that uh, are not peritonealized and these will have an adventitia. If we look at the disposition and organization of the epithelium or mucosa of the small intestine, we would find the following. Throughout the small intestine, the surface epithelium is uh, evaginated in these finger-like or indeed leaf-like folds called villi, shown here schematically, and I've left out the connective tissue core of the villus. But a second feature of the epithelium of the small intestine is that in addition to these outward villus projections, there are also downward invaginations of the epithelium which form intestinal glands, which are sometimes called crypts or crypts of Lieberkuhn. And here, as we see, the epithelium is continuous across the surface of a villus and down into a crypt of Lieberkuhn and back up again and onto the surface and perhaps back out onto another villus and so on. The cellular composition is as follows. Throughout the small intestine, the bulk of the cells on the villi and into the glands are actually so-called enterocytes. And these are tall columnar uh, epithelial cells which have microvilli on their surface, three to 500 microvilli per cell, and collectively form a very distinct, as we'll see, brush border. 
interspersed among these enterocytes in varying number are mucus secreting goblet cells and these secrete a mucus onto the uh, surface of the uh, the luminal surface of the small intestine the goblet cells are a little more numerous in the intestinal glands as we can uh, see from this cartoon illustration here and as we did with the um, gla gastric glands in the stomach we can divide each of these intestinal glands for descriptive purposes into three parts an upper third a middle third and a lower third broadly the upper third of the gland is composed of goblet cells and enterocytes the middle third of the gland is composed of goblet cells and pterocytes and contains, as we'll see a little later, some uh, panath cells. And these are cells which secrete defensins, molecules which are antibacterial in their um, nature. And finally, at the junction of the middle and the lower third and throughout the lower third, we find some stem cells. In fact, these stem cells, rather than I've illustrated them here, are located in a zone just at the junction of the middle and the lower third and form a, a belt-like structure or a band surrounding the lumen of the intestinal gland. When these guys divide they can uh, migrate and do migrate upwards and they can become either panath cells or enterocytes or goblet cells. There are of course down in the base of the gland as there are throughout the gut also enteroendocrine cells secreting hormones which as in the case of the stomach regulate the local behavior of both the epithelium, the associated glands of digestion and indeed the um, contraction of the uh, smooth muscle. One last thing which is worthy of note has to do with the general life cycle of the cells we find here, particularly the goblet cells and the enterocytes. Once they've uh, formed by mitosis of the stem cells, uh, they begin to migrate upward and out of the gland. They continue this migration um, all the way to the tip of the villus where eventually they're sloughed off and lost. So that when we look at the villus and uh, gland combinations that we see in the small intestine, we're seeing only one frame or one snapshot of what's actually happening in real life. In real life, all of these cells are slowly but surely and inexorably moving toward the tip of the villus where they'll eventually fall off and be shed. And this is the principle of how the intestinal ep epithelium re renews itself. So first let's look at a piece of duodenum. Uh, this is the lumen here. We can see it appears to have a pretty complex shape and we'll see why in a moment. Uh, here is the uh, muscular layers that form the uh, external muscularis externa. Uh, here is the submucosal region in here and as we'll see when we look we'll be able to see a muscularis mucosa and a submucosa. So let's go up in magnification a little bit now. And if we move to a region like this here we can see a, a, a fold which would constitute, I suppose, a valve of Kirkring, but in fact valves of Kirkring are largely absent from the duodenum and are really a feature which we see in the jejunum and the ileum. I would call this a, a fold, a valve of Kirkring, because of the fact that the core of this fold is made of submucosa. The muscularis mucosa extends underneath the epithelium we can see here. So this is muscularis mucosa. Here's the submucosa, here's the internal circularly oriented muscle layer, and here's the external longitudinally oriented muscle layer. One thing, and the reason to look at this magnification, one feature which we'll see here are these structures, which are glands which are found in the submucosa. And submucosal glands are only found in the small intestine in the duodenum. These submucosal glands are called Brunner's glands, and they're diagnostic for uh, duodenum. I'm going to move over here a little bit, and again, here we have uh, mucosa extending from here to here. Uh, muscularis mucosa is in here. Here we have these glands, which are Brunner's glands in the submucosal connective tissue, which makes this diagnostic for duodenum. Inner circular layer of muscle, outer longitudinal layer of muscle. Let's take a look in here, and we'll see if we can make out a little more of the uh, classic structure of the duodenum, um, particularly with regard to the mucosa. So as we look here, here's a classic villus extending out from the surface and here are intestinal glands which are cut in oblique section and extend down from the surface. So in reality, the actual flat surface, if you like, is somewhere along a line I'm drawing along here with this as a villus, a villus and a villus. Let's look at the uh, villus here, the surface of a villus. Let's look at uh, this one here. What we can see here are very tall columnar cells. Uh, 
And we can see along here, we can see a brush border, which as we know is made up of these non-motile microvilli, which increase the surface area available for absorption. <coughs> And then on the villi also we find these large blobby things, which are goblet cells. Now this isn't a particularly beautiful looking piece of uh, intestine, and you'll see better examples of villus structure and cellular structure of the small intestine in other slides you look at. Look at the core of the villus here. Although we can't make out individual vessels, um, in here we would find the capillary bed fed by arteriole and venule, and the uh, lymphatic vessel, the lacteal, which picks up triglycerides and fat. There are lots and lots and lots of cell nuclei in here and most of these are nuclei of cells of the immune system migrating to and from the epithelium. We can also look in a little more depth toward the base here. Here we have the uh, intestinal glands and you can see here that the goblet cells are a little more numerous in the glands than they are out here on the villi. Here's the muscularis mucosa. It extends around here, as we can see, and beneath it are these uh, submucosal glands, or Brunner's glands, and you can look at these and uh, um, decipher what the cell types look like in your own time. We're moving now into the bulk of the submucosa in this region in here. And this is dense, irregular connective tissue. When you look around, you'll see it's quite vascular, containing many largish blood vessels which either feed or drain the surrounding mucosa and villi. Here's the inner circular layer of smooth muscle, and outside that the outer longitudinal layer. Just out of interest, if we go up a little in magnification here, we can point out uh, this cell here is a neuron, as is this one and this little one here, and these are a little collection of the submucosal uh, plexus of neurons that are found and are characteristic of all of the gut. We see here, beside it, smooth muscle cut in longitudinal section, indicating that it's circularly oriented with respect to the axis of the gut. And as we move across through the circular layer of smooth muscle, we come also now to where smooth muscle is cut in cross section, indicating that it's oriented longitudinally with respect to the long axis of the gut. So this is the external longitudinal layer of muscle. And here again we see some cells that are quite clearly not smooth muscle cells here and perhaps here. And these cells form the complex of neurons or plexus of neurons called the myenteric uh, plexus. And here on the external surface what we see is what looks like adventitial uh, connective tissue. We don't see a simple squamous layer of mesothelial cells and therefore this is a piece of the uh, duodenum which is not peritonealized. Here's a section of jejunum. It looks a little different to some of the other sections we've looked at because it's been prepared by a slightly different technique to the traditional uh, histological technique that we've been uh, looking at tissues uh, made with. Uh, one of the advantages of this particular technique, which is called plastic embedding, is that it allows sections to be cut particularly thinly and this enables really good resolution of uh, cellular and subcellular detail. Again then, what we have here is a uh, mucosal surface, in this case made of um, long finger-like villi which are very, very closely packed together. The lumen would be here and extends down in here, but we can't see it. Beneath that, a submucosal layer of reasonably dense uh, connective tissue, and then an external uh, layer of muscle with an inner circular layer and an outer longitudinal layer. And now let's go up a little bit in magnification and take a look at what we can see. If we come to the very uh, tip here, here's the center where the lumen would be, and now we can take a look here at the structure of an actual villus. We can see this very clearly here. Here's one, here's another villus uh, here. Let's concentrate on this one here and go up a little in magnification and see uh, what can be seen. And just move from here so we can orient ourselves. So here's the villus uh, here. Uh, here we can see the lovely tall columnar cells. See them individually here. Here are their nuclei. And interspersed among them, the goblet cells. Notice here's the mucus swollen apical part of the goblet cell, and then the lower part of it where the nucleus is found forms the stem of the goblet. If we go up just a little more in magnification, we can see here this uh, red line followed with the uh, uh, pinkish material is found on the outside, which represents the brush border, the microvilli, which extend outward from the surface of the enterocytes, the tall columnar cells, but there are no microvilli on the, uh, on the goblet cells.
looking in the core of the villus in here, we can see uh, cell nuclei. Some of these belong to the capillary vessels and the lacteal, which are present, and some belong to uh, lymphocytes, which are migrating to and from the tip of the villus for the purpose of sampling the external antigenic environment. We can move now down toward the base of the villus, and the bases of the villi are around here. And now we move into here, the glandular uh, portion of the um, in mucosa. Now if we go up in magnification just a little bit. So the glandular portion begins somewhere just around here and extends downward. And we can see that the first half or so seems pretty rich in goblet cells. And then here we see the uh, structure which is the base of the gland here. If you're sharp-eyed and know what you're looking for, you'll be able to detect mitotic cells here. The reason to go down to the base of the gland on this particular slide is to see a cell type that aren't easily seen in normal uh, preparations. And these are panath uh, cells. And this is a panath cell here here and here and here and here. Panat cells in a section like this are distinguished by having highly eosinophilic granules present in their apical cytoplasm. And these granules contain defensins which are secreted into the lumen of the gut to protect against the uh, attack by uh, pathogenic bacteria. Here is the muscularis mucosa underneath the uh, mucosa. Here we're into the submucosa here. So submucosal connective tissue you can see in a um, section like this, it looks like pretty dense uh, connective tissue. Uh, this structure here is probably a, a little bit of um, submucosal uh, plexus with a couple of neurons involved here, maybe another neuron involved here in submucosal plexus. And here we move to the inner circular layer of uh, smooth muscle and outer longitudinal layer. And then interspersed around between the two layers are here and here. Again, more neural structures, plexuses. This is the myenteric plexus, which is found between the two muscle layers. Finally, let's look at the ilium. Here's a section of uh, ilium here. Uh, the villi and the ilium are quite complex in shape and are very often leaf-shaped. And as a consequence in a straight cross-section like this, what we see are parts of these leaf-shaped villi cut and appearing like little islands separated uh, from each other in the lumen. But in fact, these are all parts of uh, one or two very large, very complex-shaped villi. On this side here, the villi look a bit more uh, conventionally shaped and are a bit more finger-like, although they're somewhat blunter. So we can see the mucosa here very clearly. Submucosa, which we can see here, extending in here. So this is a valve of Kirkring. Here's submucosa extending in here, a valve of Kirkring. Submucosa extending in here, a valve of Kirkring. Outside of that, we can see uh, the muscularis externa. And really, the reason for looking at this particular section is to look at uh, this region here, and here, and here, and here, and so on. These are very large lymphoid aggregations, which occupy both the lamina propria and the submucosa. And they're very specific structures. They're most numerous in the ilium, particularly the terminal ilium. And these are referred to and are called Pyers patches. If we increase in magnification a little, here we can see this uh, is submucosa extending outward. So this fold here would be a valve of Kirkring. Overlying the and extending out from the valve of Kirkring are villi. Let's look at this one uh, here, for example. And when we look at the villus, we can convince ourselves, even at this magnification, that this is a simple columnar epithelium with goblet cells interspersed. And we can see, looking at the thin red line with the pink outside it, there's a brush border here indicating microvilli. The core of this villus is loose connective tissue, lamina propria. We can't make out the capillaries or the lacteal. Um, but what we can see is that this is a very cellular uh, appearing mass of uh, material that forms the core of the villus and is made of lamina propria decrease in magnification a little bit. We come down to the villus. Here we have intestinal glands, which have been cut in uh, cross-section, so they're not directly in the plane of this section. And here we have the internal muscularis uh, mucosa, which separates the lamina propria and mucosa from the submucosa beneath. If we now move around a little bit and move over past these intestinal glands here with goblet cells, these glands again cut in cross-section, 
And now, coming back in magnification to get a bit of a sense, we're moving into a region here where we have massive aggregations of lymphoid cells, and these big aggregations are called lymphoid follicles when they're found isolated. But in the ilium, there are many of these, and collectively they form what's known as a pyrus patch, a specialized structure which samples the antigenic environment in the external milieu, the lumen of the gut. And let's look just over this region here. Although it's not really uh, very evident over much of this particular pyrus patch, but in this region here what you might notice is that the epithelium covering the pyrus patch is distinctly different to the tall columnar enterocytes with goblet cells that we find uh, elsewhere. So in parts over the pyrus patch the epithelium looks quite different. And this is because here the epithelium is formed of specialized M cells whose role is to pick up antigenic material from the lumen of the gut and to give that antigenic material to antigen presenting cells which migrate around these lymphatic nodules and uh, present antigen to T and B cells. Once again these pyrus patches are diag a diagnostic feature of the uh, ileum. Finally, let's just take one quick look at the uh, muscle, which is here. You'll notice the muscle layers are quite thin, uh, it would appear. We have an inner circular and outer longitudinal layer of, uh, of smooth muscle. And if you look around, you may be able to find um, neurons of the uh, myenteric and uh, submucosal plexus also.